Good morning and blessed Sunday. It's Pastor Shane here, Worship Without Walls. I'd like to thank you all for joining me here for worship, word, and prayer as we are here on a blessed Sunday together during this summer. We look to each other in light and love, and ultimately we come together in the name of Jesus to worship as siblings in Christ and as followers of Jesus Christ. Siblings, let us pray. Through the dreams and visions, O God, you broaden the horizon and hope of your people, that they may discover the meaning of your covenant, even in the midst of trial and in exile. Increase the number of those who believe in your word, so that all people may joyfully respond to your call and share in your promises. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. We turn to 388 in our red hymnal. By his spirit. If Christ is in you, your spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he will also give you life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. If by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Amen. And amen. And siblings, I ask that you please join me in our affirmation of faith. Let us begin. We believe in Jesus Christ the Lord, who is promised to the people of Israel, who came in the flesh to dwell among us, who announced the coming of the rule of God, who gathered disciples and taught them, who died on the cross to free us from sin, who rose from the dead to give us life and hope, who reigns in heaven at the right hand of God, who comes to judge and bring justice to victory. We believe in God, his Father, who raised him from the dead, who created and sustains the universe, who acts to deliver his people in times of need, who desires all men everywhere to be saved, who rules over the destinies of men and nations, who continues to love men even when they reject him. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who is the form of God present in the church, who moves men to faith and obedience, who is the guarantor of our deliverance, who leads us to find God's will in the word, who assists those whom he renews in prayer, who guides us in discernment, and who impels us to act together. We believe God has made us his people to invite others to follow Christ, to encourage one another into deeper commitment, to proclaim forgiveness of sins and of hope, to reconcile men through God, through word and deed to bear witness to the power of love over hate, to proclaim Jesus the Lord over all, to meet the daily tasks of life with purpose, to suffer joyfully for the cause of right, to the end of the earth, to the end of the age, and to the praise and his glory. Amen. And amen. Our reading from Psalm today comes from Psalm 139, verses 1 through 12, 23 and 24. Let us begin. O oh Lord, you have searched me and know me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You have hedged me behind and before, and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. 
If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the utmost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall still lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as the day, and the darkness as the light are both alike to you. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties, and see if there is any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Here ends our reading from the scripture of Psalm. Thanks be to God. And our opening hymn today is In Christ There Is No East and West. Siblings, let us pray. Friends in Christ, we know that God invites us to hold the needs of our sisters and our brothers as dear to us as our own needs. We know that we are asked to love our neighbors as ourselves as we offer our thanksgivings and our petitions on behalf of the church and of the world. Siblings, we continue to lift up the following names of individuals who are on our prayer list. Nick, Robin, Jackie, Joe, Ace, Daisy, Dan, Mandy, D, Caden. We lift up Courtney, we lift up Lennox. We lift up Linda, we lift up Amanda, Ryan, and Teddy. We lift up Beth, Max, Ray. We lift up Nora, we lift up Pat. Each one of our Pats in our ministry. We lift up Muriel, we lift up Bonnie. We lift up T, Lance, and Chris. We lift up Brianna. We lift up Timoth, Bob, and Val. We lift up Rihanna. We lift up our veterans who have fought to defend those out there but are struggling. We lift up the sick. Lord, we lift up those who battle day in, day out with mental illness. We lift up to you our siblings in the 2S LGBTQIA plus community. We lift up to you, Lord, those who are in need of shelter right now, those who have no bed to lay and are deemed in this country homeless. 
We look to you, Lord, for your strength, for your wisdom, for your guidance. We look to you, Lord, that you would continue to have discernment over us and what we do. And that we may show your true fruition here on earth, your true light, your true love. We ask that you bless and lay your merciful hands down upon those who need your forgiveness as well as those who need your healing. We look to you, O Lord, that you would hear our prayer as God of power. And that through the ministry of your Son, that you would free us from the grip of the tomb. And that we may desire you as the fullness of life and proclaim your saving deeds to all of the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and Amen. We turn to our blue hymn, the 476, the soldiers of Christ arise. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God. So that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. With the breastplate of righteousness in place, with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. And amen. Our next hymn is Grace Alone. Grace alone, which God supplies. 
his strength unknown he will provide christ in us our cornerstone we will go forth in christ alone grace alone which god supplies strength unknown he will provide christ in us our cornerstone we will go forth in grace alone we will go forth in grace alone Amen. Amen. Siblings in Christ, please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, leading us not to temptation, but delivering us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us continue in prayer, siblings. Holy God, we are living in days of division and polarization, and we regretfully confess that your church is not exempt from that statement. Regardless of where we stand, it is far too easy to look at those who see things differently and see them as weeds, stunting the good fruit we could bear. As we bring our offerings to you this day, the temptation to focus on our own agenda is strong. Help us to give generously without judging. Give us the faith to put them to your use and humility to know that only you can see clearly what is wheat and what is weed. We pray in the name of Christ who knows all hearts. Amen and amen. Siblings in Christ, if you feel compelled to tithe with this ministry, please click on our webpage or click in our link tree. And you will find different tithe buttons there of how to donate to this ministry, how to help others. And we are looking to raise funds right now to help two families at this moment in time, but we could use so much more to help so many others. Again, anything, if you're able, will help. We now turn into our Bible to the gospel of our Lord for this morning. And the gospel of our Lord comes from the gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 24 through 30, and 36 to 43. Let us begin. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tars among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and the produced the crop, then the tars also appeared. And so the servants of the owner came and said to them, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do you want us to go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at that time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house 
And his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the tares in the field. He answered and said to them, He who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is of the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom, but the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age. And the reapers are the angels. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and are burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and those who practice lawlessness, and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Here ends our scripture from the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. And this brings me to the message for this morning, a message entitled, How to Plant. First and foremost, I want to talk to you siblings from the standpoint of farming, gardening, running a homestead. Now, for many of you, I look to you and ask, have you ever had a garden at your house? Have you ever worked towards procreating life and things like that? You see, when we talk about sowing seed in our culture nowadays, there's many ways that we could talk about sowing seed. First and foremost, when we talk about sowing seed and we look at it from a planting standpoint, we look at it from farmers and gardeners and homesteaders that ultimately put their crop out, their seeds out, whether they start them early so that they put plants out and nurture them from indoors or a well-maintained and stable environment, or they sow the seeds directly in the ground and they water them and they feed them and so forth and hope that the plant produces up and produces fruit. Okay. In the same aspect, if we look at it from the point of reproduction, sowing seed, we look at it from a standpoint of a man sowing their seed with a woman and ultimately bearing a child, the woman becomes pregnant and bears the fruit of a child and birth of a new life. And we see the term of sowing seed multiple times throughout the Bible. In fact, 46 passages discuss this. And we have things from discussing Abraham's seed being sown into the world, that he would be the father of generations, to ultimately in such cases as the parable that we were dealing with today in the Gospel of Matthew. And as we sit there and look at today's Gospel in the Gospel of Matthew, we have to look and understand from the standpoint of maybe that farmer, that gardener, right? Because, yes, I understand that the parable sits there and ultimately... talks about the sower, right? And the man who sowed good seed in the field. But what happens when that man has someone come in and throw other seed down with theirs? So they refer to them as tares in today's gospel. Many of us would look at that as weeds growing in our garden beds and our flower beds or invasive thing, species of plant life or vines or grass, things that grow up and ultimately take from that nourishment and those nutrients that are plants that are going to bear fruit, bear food, 
would need. And that is ultimately what we're being talked about in this scripture passage. But we're not just referring to this scripture in the form of planting, but we are talking about it from the standpoint of who Jesus Christ is to all of us. And in our first part of our scripture today, we talk about those tares that are thrown down with the wheat, right? But then we sit there and we get to the second half. And the second part is where Jesus explains to his disciples. And he starts off by saying, He who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. We know that Christ is the Son of Man. We know that Jesus was the one came in flesh of God made man, right? And that he is the one who sows the good seed. But then we know that there are things in this world that will come into play that will ultimately pull that good seed that he has sown away. Things like lust, fornication, adultery. Things like hate, envy, idolization. You see, there's much more that can pull us away from that good seed, but those are just a few of the things that I wanted to bring up as we're talking about this, because we were talking about Jesus being that good seed. And when Jesus uses the story of the seed to teach us, he's using it to teach us that he is the one of which love comes from. That when we receive God's love, we are like good seeds which grow, which produce more, but ultimately produce more love and share more love. And not just sharing love with those that we come in contact with in our day-to-day -day lives, but sharing love with those hopefully all over the world. But I bring this up to you this morning because there are many times where Many people use the term Christian to identify themselves. And in talking with a friend and fellow minister, fellow reverend, he uses the term follower of Jesus. And that is very specific in the fact that we are following Christ instructed us to do. And I truly love that. And I will tell you why is because when we are following Jesus, that means we are not leaving any room for human interpretation, we are not leaving any room for the old doctrine of law, but we are leaving only the room of the law that Jesus brought forth, which accompanies all, which is love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your might, and to love your neighbor as yourself, the second being just as great as the first. Because ultimately, how do we show God's love? But through loving our neighbor. And with that said, I understand that we have neighbors out there that will condemn us for simply one article of clothing or an item that might be in our screen or our backgrounds. But we still are supposed to show them love. There are many things that I sit there and I come in contact with in verbiage, which unfortunately, based on what those Christians have been taught, they believe that they're still showing love even if they hate what they call the sin. But if you hate the sin and the sin is a part of that person, that is who God created them to be, then you are ultimately hating the person which is against the will of God, which is against that loving grace of God. Which means that the seed that was put in you in the beginning to bear the good fruit has ultimately been changed, altered, fallen into the temptations of this worldly plane. 
and withered away. Pulling you astray from Jesus Christ. Pulling you astray from the love that he has shared to each and every one of us. But yet, siblings in Christ, if we stay true to our path and true to the light and love that Jesus brings to us, as he has sowed that seed into us, we then go forth into the world in that light and love that Jesus has given to us. As the Son of Man, as the one who sows that good seed, and we become that fruit that he was hoping to produce, sharing more light, sharing more love, sharing more truths to the world. And I understand when we toe the line of love, it toes an emotional line. It toes a line that also produces things such as anger and rage. But we cannot allow that anger and that rage to lead to hate because then we are no better than those who would use the word of God against us. We are no better than those who would use the word of God to condemn and spread hate to others. We are no better than those that would use the word of God to dehumanize any human being based on personal beliefs of not agreeing with what and who some was created to be in the image of God. We sit here and we worship a holy trinity, but yet we cannot fathom a non-binary God. We cannot fathom a two-sex God. But yet we sit there and we worship the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, three in one. We sit there and we want to say that we are good Christians and we go to church on Sunday, but by Sunday afternoon or Monday morning, we are back to the same hateful rhetoric for many. And that hateful rhetoric is ultimately spreading lies about individuals, is ultimately spreading lies about a certain community to dehumanize them, to make them become less than human in the eyes of a population that would want to do harm to them. And I ask you, siblings, today, does that sound very Christ-like to you? Does that sound like the seed was sown by the Son of Man? You see, we know how to plant a garden. We know how to put those seeds in the ground. But do we know how to plant those seeds like Jesus did? That even in the face of hate, we can still plant that seed of love, that seed of hope, that seed of light that shows the truths. Truths to injustice, truths to hate, truths to what someone might have been brought up, taught their entire life that would be false? Or do we ultimately fall into the same contentment as the wheat growing with the tares? Are we going to accidentally be bundled up with the tares and thrown into the pile of flames? Or are we going to be put with the wheat in the barn? producing good crop, producing more love in this world, producing more light and truth in this world. You see, we all have those choices in our lives, but ultimately it comes down to the first and foremost thing, and that is knowing how to plant. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come to you today and we look to you for your thankfulness your guidance, your mercy. We look to you, Lord, thankful for everything you've given us. And we ask that you would continue to watch over us, that you would continue to guide us. You would continue to remind us that what it is to teach us to how to plant is through the life of your Son, Jesus Christ. It is through the love of your Son, Jesus Christ. And it is through the mercy and the redemption we received through your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask that you continue to guide us from this day forward and always. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.
Siblings, we now prepare for our final hymn on eagle's wings. siblings steadfast god teach us your way and your truth root us in you alone and help us to grow in grace and love that we may fulfill our role and our work in the reign of jesus christ himself amen and amen and now siblings may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you May the Lord turn his face toward you and grant you peace. Siblings in Christ, go in peace. Amen and amen.